So, okay, we can start. So, my name is Ivan Duarte. I'm the football director at Agilina. Um, I will be speaking today about single directory components. And basically, what I want to do in this case is to make it more easier to grab because usually when we heard about single directory components, they used to be like theoretical knowledge about them. But I really want to show you some examples and some tools that you can use. Um, maybe if it's that way, you can be motivated to start using single directory components in your next project, and you will see how easy it is to do. So uh, basically, yeah, at Agilina, we do Drupal for government. So we work with National Archives, and Department of Education, and US Force, and these kind of projects. And uh, before, Doing that, I, I want to do most of my most of my presentation. I want to do some live or some real time things. But before that, you need to know at least the basics of things, the basics of single directory components to be able to understand what is happening behind the scenes. So I will do that. But before we start, uh, is anyone here who have never heard about single directory components before, or all of you have heard about them? Okay, um, the people who know what they are, are you already using single directory components in your projects or you are not using them? Okay, so as I told before, the idea is with this stuff, you will be able to understand the basic things and also you will be able to start using them and you will see that that's really simple, it's not that difficult maybe as you, as you may think. So yeah, what they are, the single directory components basically the name is because they allow you to organize all the files related to a rendering element or rendering component in just a single directory. So you will be able to have all the images, all the CSS, and the tweak templates, and these kind of things. All those things will be encapsulated in just one single directory. So that's the reason of their name. And another good thing about them is that they are now included in the Drupal core as an official module. They are not experimental anymore. So at some point, all the, all the websites in Drupal will be using single directory components also in the admin area. So that's something important to know because all of us will need to, to use them. What are the advantage, advantages of using single directory components in general? So the main advantage should be the modularity. It allows you to to have better modularity and reusability of your components. So you will be able to create a component and maybe it will be easier just to move this component for, from one thing to the other one. So that's really great. And in that way, it will improve the organization of your theming and all the structure that you have for your theming or for your, for your components in general. So that will be really simple for you. You will have a folder for the components and then you will have uh, several components there and you will be able to organize them in a better way. Also it enhances the collaboration because uh, in this case having all those files separated it will be easier for a front-end developer just to go there, create the component, prepare the template, prepare all those things and then at some point the back-end developer can just go and use that component to render the things. So it will be easier the workflow for the team in general to use the single directory components. And also, the last thing I will say is the consistency because if at some point most of the Drupal websites will be using single directory components, it will be easier for us when we inherit a project from another company or from another vendor, it will be easier for us to maintain the components because they will be using a similar structure and a similar strategy. So, this is the basic anatomy of a single directory component. They used to have a, a component YAML file where you can define like a, like a structure, some information about the component for the system to be able to, to understand the components. You have the tweak template, as currently we have for other things in Drupal, like nodes and fields and these kind of things. You can have CSS files, JavaScript, and, and images in general. So that's the basic thing. You can start just with the with the tweak and the component, and that will be it. You can start in that way. And now, this could be some examples, just a really simple example. Suppose suppose that you need a bottom component. In this case, that will be really easy. You will just need these four files, 
in your, in your theme for your component and you will have a, a component Java file, the tree, the CSS and the JavaScript. The same thing will be for a card, card component, you will have the component YAML, the tweak, the CSS, and JavaScript, and images, and other things that you need. Okay, so now we will start with the, with the cool things. Because we, I, I want to show you how we'll be creating my first single directory component, really easy. I recommend these two ways. One way will be, use, uh, will be using Drash commands. There is an existing draft command for that. And the other one is that you can just copy from another thing. Currently, the core has some components that you can take as, as a base for your project. And um, to be able to demo that, I will be using this, this ugly site that I have here. I'm using Bulma in this case for, as, a, as a CSS framework, but you can use any other CSS framework. This is a common case. I, I wanted to show you a real common case because in general, we will be using CSS frameworks. We won't be doing the things from scratch. So, Ulma for me is a perfect example of a, of a modular, existing modular CSS framework. But I have done the same in USWDS, and there is a contributed theme for, for, that, for that. So, in this case, I will use Ulma. I will try to render a component here. I will be building the, the component. I will be showing you how easy it is to start. So let's do that. I'm, I have this site installed here in my local. I will try to make it bigger for you to, to be able to see it. And let's do that. Let's do that now. Are you, are you able to see it? Good? Okay, I'm using Lando. You can use whatever you want. But I will just do this. Lando trash generate and SDC. And that will be it. The first question from Lando will be, the theme machine name, in my case it is Bulma SDC. And now the component name. For the component, because I'm using Bulma, I will be using this, this message component from Bulma. So what I will try to do is to generate this simple component. As you can see, it is really simple. It just has a header and then the body. So I will start doing this one. So let me go back here and I will create this component here, message. It will suggest the matching name for, for, for this. I can add a description. I will copy the description for, from Boom as well. That's really simple. So I can just do this. And then it will start asking me some questions about this component. For this one, I will make it really simple. So I will not add dependencies. I will say that I need CSS. And I will say that I don't need JavaScript. And yeah, it is asking me now some other questions. So by default, the components used to have a two kind of information of data that you can send to the components. One of them are the properties. So for this case, uh, I will use the properties just to send the header. And then I will use a slots to send the body. Because the slot is a good uh, choice if you want to send a markup, HTML, pure HTML, and things like that. So I will do the two things right now. So first I will just say that, yeah, I need a property, and the property will be header. And then it will suggest the machine name for this property. I can say message, message share. And then it will suggest me some uh, data types, in this case. The single directory components are able to validate the data type that you are sending. So for example, if I say that I will be sending an array, and then when I render the component, I send a string, it will show me the error. You are sending the wrong data type. So in this case, because this is just a title, I will select one for, for the string. And I will say that I don't need another one, because I will be using this slot. And that will be it. As you can see, it is generating for me the, the files that I mentioned before. It's generating the component jump file, the CSS, the G, is generating a readme and also a thumbnail for this. And let's go see how they look. As you can see, this is my theme. As you can see, I have the theme here, the Puma SDC theme, and then I have this components folder. And inside this, Drush created this for me, this message component. As you can see, it is automatically generating the scheme, the schema for me, and it is generating the information that I, that I sent. And as you can see, the property is there. So now we have a component waiting for, for the header. And for the tweak, 
it is suggesting me like a default tree, but what I can do, because I'm working with, a, with an existing framework, I can do this. I can just try to copy this. As you can see, there is something important to mention here. If the best, as a best practice, you should still use the attributes, because as you know by default, Drupal will try to send some information through the attributes, this component. So I, I will do this to avoid losing completely the attributes. So I will do this, something like this. Instead of just using the default markup, I will add the attributes. The attributes, and I will say add class. Uh, I will add the class for, for Bulma, for the Bulma CSS framework. Are you able to see this screen, you know, right? Or do I need to make it bigger? OK, I will try to make it a bit bigger. Yeah. Okay, so I'm explore now. Okay, message. In this case, I'm just adding the class and it will remove this part. I did so as I told you before because I need to preserve the attributes because that's how it's practiced in Drupal and in single directory components in general. So now we have this, and now we know that we are sending that header. So for this use case, I will replace the hello world with the rendering of that element. So I will do something like this, and this will be the header. I can start just modifying this. I will remove the cross button. I will say this is right now, and I will say this, and I will remove this one. So now we have at least this part of the component. So how do you render these components? There are multiple ways. I will show you one that is really interesting for me. It's really great. There is an existing module that you can use if you want to, if you want to easily include your components, if, for example, in a, in a landing page or something like that. The module is called SDC block, or Singular Directory Components block. So with that module, you can, when you define a single directory component, it will try to generate a block type for you. So let me show you right now. I already created this component, so I will go to my ugly site, and I will go here to the block layout. Maybe I will need to clear the cache for the system to be able to, to identify my new, uh, my new component, so let me go and do this before. And just clear the cache, and I will go back to my site, and I will try, let me reload this page, I will try to add that component. That component should appear there because of the SDC block module, because the SDC block module will try to get the, inform the information from the component channel file, and it will try to create a block type for me. So let's do that. Let's try to add in the content. And let's search for a message. And as you can see, there is a message from the SDC block module. So I will try to place this block. And it is able to recognize that I'm sending uh, some properties, parameters. So I'll say is the C block in action. And that's it. I can just start from here. I will add my component and I will add it before the articles that I have in my home page. This could be exported as configuration if you are creating a landing page. So for, for me, that's a good thing. And let's go back to the home. But as you can see now, we have this part, as the C block in action. Now at least it is rendering the component. We don't have the styling, we don't have those things, but you can inspect this element. I have the theme debug enabled, so you will be able to see that the system is recognizing the, the, the element there. So as you can see, it is able to find that I'm rendering a component, and the component is called a message, and the structure that I sent in the tweet file. So the component is there. So now it's time to maybe uh, create the slot for the body. So to do that, I will show you the second way that you can create components. I remember I told you that you can use Drush, but you can also copy from another place. And in Drupal core, you can find some examples. So I will do there. I will do that. So let's go back here. This, this is a, a default Drupal installation. I will go to the core. You can go to profiles. You can go to the, this is the more advanced component so far, so maybe in the future there will be more, but you can go to the profile, demo your money, and then to the themes, and the, the default theme that they have, and then there will be some components here. They have some cards, they have some badge, the banner. In this case, I will see the branding one, 
And as you can see, they have this structure for me, so you can copy this component and just modify things that you want and, and go with that. But in this case, I will use this as an inspiration for the slots. So I will copy this part, and I will use this part for my component, for my message component. So maybe I can just go here, as this, at the slots, and my slot will be called body, and that will be it. So it means that it, it will be waiting for a, for a slot called body. And now I can do the same strategy to uh, get the, the rendering. How do we are, how are they rendering the, the, the slots? And this is the way you can just copy this as an inspiration for you, for your component. And I will do the same. I will copy this here. And I will copy the, the structure from there. In this case, I can do this. I will remove all the part here. And then I will call this body because this is the name of my of my slot. So I will just say body. So we are ready. Now we have uh, a slot waiting for waiting for the body information of this component. I will clear my cache and I will go back to my component in this comp page. And now we can try to configure this block. And let's see how it works. Okay, so it's taking a bit because of the clear cache that I did. But now here's the body. It is waiting for the body. So this is this is great. It is working. This is great. Yes. Okay, so I can just add another thing. So I will make it bold here, and that's it. I can save it, and that's it. Now the last part will be the styling because I'm using a CSS framework. I can just use that. Uh, use that CSS, uh, CSS from, from that framework, so I will do that now. But, but this is an important thing to mention now. Uh, sometimes the things look just magical, but this is not what I want to do here. I want to show you the, the real things. But this is something that you need to have in mind. When you are using a CSS framework and you are using single directory components, you need to tweak your SAS compilation because if you really need to generate the CSS files in the same directory they are, you need to tweak your SAS compilation to be able to do so, because by default, most of the other frameworks used to just group all the compilation in one place, and that's it. They used to generate just one file for all your site. They don't used to generate each file in their own folder. So that's what I show you now. I have those things already set up, so I can show you those things. So. Let's do that. So I have this. This is the way that my code file is looking. So this is the part doing the magic, the, the magic things that I just mentioned. What it is doing is just uh, looking for the components folder, and it is trying to compile each SAS file in their own folder. But as you can see, it's not that big. It's not something that is really difficult. You can add the same strategy to any other Gold file or any other task runner that you can use. So this is the way, this is the part that is doing the magic. So when I do this, I can just go to my components, I will convert this to SAS, and I will try to add the, the, the CSS from my, from my CSS framework. So in this case, I can just use this, use, and then I will, in this case, we, because I'm using Bulma, I will try to find Puma in my node modules, so I think it is, node modules, Puma, and then I will search for the component. As I told you from the beginning, Puma is a perfect example of a CSS framework that you can use with single directory components because Puma is really modular, so you are able to do these kind of things. I was trying to do the same things with USWDS, it was not that easy. <laughs> so, I, yeah. So this is, I, I can just use the message here, and I have a, a local uh, robot command for this, so I just, uh, build, it is just running the bulk file from, from, for me, and as you can see it is building the things, it will try to search for the source files in each component, and it will try just to uh, generate the CSS code. So as you can see right now, here is my source file, and then here is my CSS file, and you can do something similar with our CSS framework, so it is there, so I don't need to do anything else. And then, let me, I prefer to clear the cache, <laughs> because 
I, I have the, the, the debug enabled, but I prefer to do the cache just to make sure that things will work. And I will reload this page, and let's see how it goes. The expectation is that it should have the styling. So now it is, has, it has, it is working. So now, as you can see, it is not that difficult. You can start it that way. And now, as you can see, because single target components can have their specific folder in your theme, you can do like a progressive migration because you don't need to convert all your theme to single directory components now. You just need to start with some components, some components, and components. And at the end, you will have to, the entire theme move to single directory components. So this is the idea. So now, as you can see here, you may think, now you would think of some ideas that you can do with your theme. For example, this is something that we can do. As you can see in the Puma CSS framework, you have some types of messages. So that will be really easy. To, now with this example, you can do something like that. As you can see, they used to have some type, and they just add this class. This class that say is link, is primary, is info. So I will do something really quick for you to see. I will add first the option here, so I can just copy and paste this here below. I can say type. It is a string. I can say type and message type. And this is another thing that you can do with components. You can limit, in this way, the values that the people can send to, to the components. In this way, I will limit. I will put a uh, default that will be that gray color that you already see. I will put uh, info. I will add a new one maybe for success. I think it is that way. And maybe for, they used to call it danger in, in Boma instead of error. So let's do this. Now we have a new, uh, a new option that we can send to our components. I will clear the catch as usual. And let's see how it looks in the, in the system. So I will go back here, and I will configure my blog. And let's see how it looks. The expectation is that now you should have a new option, and it is now. You have the type. And we, have, we, will, we can select success. Let's see if it works. But remember, we are sending the information, but we are doing nothing yet with that information. So, it is the expectation. We were able to provide the option for the for the content administrator, but now we can use that information in the tweak file to do the things that we need to do. In this case, because we are using the attributes, we can do something like set the classes, maybe in a, in a regular way. This is common in, in, the, in the components or in the templating the strategies that we use in, in Drupal. Uh, sorry, this will be called classes. And then we can add our default class that is message. And then we can add another conditional class because I need to make it conditional based. If I select the default one, then I don't need to add another class. But if I select like success or info or link or any other type, it should be the, it should be a different. So now we are receiving that as type. So we can say this type is different than default. Then the class, sorry, I need to add quote here. Then the class should be something like is, then the dash, and then we can uh, concatenate to type something like this type. Let's go how it works. Let's see how it works. I will try just to go there and I will see if it works, or maybe we need to clear the cache as usual. <laughs> So let me see. I will clear the cache because usually when we uh, modify the trick of the, of the component, we need to clear the cache. So let's do that now. And let's see if it works. Okay, slowly. Maybe we can check how is, what is happening here. The good thing as I told you before is that we have here, we can at least ensure that the system is trying to render my component. So yeah, it is good. Yeah. The system is adding the default class. Maybe I have something wrong in my, in my in my code. Yeah, I forgot this. I forgot to say that now I'm adding this. Instead of the only the message class, I'm adding the classes. So that was the missing part. Okay, let's reload this. But as you can see, in general, the, the workflow for a front-end developer is the usual workflow. Finally, we have it. 
So it is working, it is great, it is successful. So yeah, now we can control this component in different ways and you can give to the content editor some things that they can use. For example, I can go to uh, change it to, to the danger or error and it is working. It's I mean, all the things that we need. So as you can see, it is a simple example you can create you can start creating your components, you can start adding them progressively. You don't need to convert all your thing to, to single directory components. And that's a, a good example of that. So with this uh, simple example, I was able to show you important things about components, like this, the properties, the slots. I was able to show you that there are some complementary modules, like SDC block that allows you to do these great things with the SDC blocks. You were able to see what are the things that you need to have in mind for the for the SAS compilation process? You need to do some tweaks and you need to be able to understand the general SAS concepts to be able to forward or use those component styles. And now I will show you something interesting as well. There's another module that you can use if you want to if you want to render your entities, for example, is is usual that you need to render a specific nodes or uh, media or things like that in a specific way. There's a, there's a way to make it easier for, I would say, non-developers uh, to, to use those components. So in this case, I will show you this module, SDC Display. So I will show you this module and I will convert those cards of articles, those articles that are there, into Bulma cards. So as you can see, these are the these are the Bulma elements, so I will show you really fast how they look. I have these things here. So the Bulma card is something like this. So you will have some image, some title and the content. I will convert them to, to, to Bulma cards. And I have this component already built. I did the same strategy. I created a component channel and then you have the CSS and you have all the things ready for the card to be rendered. And now, with that module, what I will do, this is a really simple view, I will show you now. This is a really simple view that is trying to render those uh, nodes as teaser, as teaser. So I will go and I will modify the teaser view mode. So let me go there, content types, and in this case I will modify the teaser view mode for this content type. So I will go there, manage display, teaser, and now, with that module, if you go to the end of this page, you will find this option, Render using a component. So you will be able to click here, and you will be able to use your existing components to render these nodes, and you will be able to map the fields in these nodes to real uh, component properties or and slots. So I will select my card, and I will start doing the things. This is really interesting, as you can see, when I see the properties, I'm not seeing all the fields that this, uh, that this uh, node has, or this content type has. I'm seeing only the ones that are being really rendered, and I'm seeing some of them that are suggested, like the, that the author and these kind of things, like the creation date and these kind of things. So I will start doing that. I select the card components, I will say for the title, I will add the title, the, the module is adding me this option by default. I will say that I want to render the image for the image uh, property. In this case, I don't have the link yet, but I will add at least the body as a slot. And as you can see, for the slot, I can select multiple because the slot is arbitrary markup. So in this case, you can send whatever you want. So I will select these things. And for the link, I create this extra field. So, single uh, SDC display is supporting extra fields. Yeah, I, I contribute that patch for this module. So, you will be able to use extra fields. So, I will add this extra field to the presentation. And now it should appear here. So, this is the node URL for the link. So, yeah, that will be, that will be it. Sorry, I don't know what happened. No, Maybe the bar, <laughs> I don't know. Hello, hello. Yeah, maybe it is related to a battery. Hello. I will try. I will try to turn it off. And let's see what happens if I turn it on. Hello. Can you hear me? No, it is not working. Okay. I can try to continue this way, but I don't know if you will be able to to hear to listen to me. 
I will try to make it louder. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, you will be able to listen behind. Yes. Okay, so in this case, what I did is just I mapped the fields into the slots and into the other parts of the component. I will save it and I will go back to my home page that I used to, to have. And now I will see the result. And this is the result. I'm rendering those and rendering those teasers now as cards that I already prepared and I can now I can improve the styling, I can do other things with this component, but as you can see, it is really easy to map in this way the things. You don't need to go to the tweak file of that node and you don't need to do all the things manual. In this case, it's easier for you as a, as a content administrator or something like that. And also, now that I'm showing you this, I can show you something interesting. Single directory components support nesting. So you can render a component inside the other. And that's interesting if you are using design systems or you are using, you are using atomic design or something like that because maybe you have some smaller components like icons or buttons and then you, can, you want to compose a really big uh, component with them. So as you can see in the card component, I have the button component. So this button component is here in the elements. And as you can see, I have the button component and it is waiting for their own properties their own options for that component. So this is really great for design system because you can organize the things in that way that you can maintain the things easier and you can be really granular in this configuration. So this is something good that you can do in, with single directory components. So as you could see, those are two simple examples of, about how to use single directory components and how you can start doing that from now with uh, some trash commands. You can just copy and paste from the, from the core and you can start with them. So um, with those things, what else do you need to know maybe? What else is important for you to know before we, we finish? Uh, as, I, as I told you before, I recommend you to start working with single directory components if you are, if, uh, recommend you to use a CSS framework that use CSS variables. Because if not, it will be really difficult to be able to separate the options of each component in their own file. We did, do, we did that using USWDS. There is a contributed theme that we did with Mike Herschel called the governor. And we were using USWDS, but USWDS uses SAS variables. So for us, that was really difficult to be able to separate those things. We were able to do that. We were creating a settings file, as you could see in the, in the right side. We were creating a settings file, and we were like uh, importing all the SAS variables. And then on each component, we needed to do that. We needed to forward or use the, the settings file to be able to extract those variables and to be able to use those variables inside the, the component. So it is possible, but it makes your life harder. <laughs> and it, was your, it makes your, your process to, to change the single directory components harder. So this is something that I recommend. Start with a really modular CSS framework. And the other good thing about single directory components is that they can use libraries overrides. So in the component jumble file, you can do definitions as you do with regular libraries in Drupal. As you can see, I'm adding dependencies. So you can add dependencies on other libraries. You can add your own JavaScript, or you can modify the entire structure of the component to create your own JavaScript files. You can split the component uh, functionality in multiple JavaScript files, so you can call all of them independently. Sorry. You can call all of them independently, as you can see, my component JS, other file, and other file. And the same thing with CSS files. So you can go uh, with advanced configuration for the component. This is something that you can do in the component JAML file. And another good thing about single directory components is that they used to send some metadata to the tweak files. So in that case, can you hear now? OK. Great. We need to start from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will do it this way. Okay, so another good thing with single directory components is that they used to send some metadata to the tweak file. And most of, in most of the cases, you won't find it useful, but there is a useful case for that. 
For example, in this case, I'm showing you a logo component or something like that. And as you can see, as part of your tree file, you will be receiving these variables. You will be receiving the path to the component. You will be receiving the machine name, status, and other things. And in the part below, you can see that I was using the component metadata and the path to be able to add images as SVG images or things like that. Because if not, you will need to know the path to the component to be able for your team to find the right image. So in this case, you are like using like a relative path in some way, so it makes your life easier for the component. So, so those are some advices that I can give you when you are working with single target components in general. So there are more advanced things that you can do, but I, in this talk, as I told you before, I wanted to give you a good introduction to single target components and not just show you theoretical things that you may or you can do with them. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, introduction and you are motivated now to start using single therapy components. So, sign for questions. Okay, you can sign. Did you say you committed uh, or you submitted a, a pull request for display for that to be able to pull in the URL? Is that, is that yeah, uh, what I did is I contributed the patch for the SDC display module to be able to support extra fields because there are some cases where you don't have all the things that you need in the default fields so you need to create some computer or some custom fields in code so it is supporting now extra fields so you can create your own in this case I, I just created an extra field for rendering the URL of the, of the node Yeah, the question was if you have a component that, that, a component that is supported like slots and you want to be able to change the text formats, and is that possible? In general, yes, because it is using the rendering that is coming from Drupal. So if the field in this case is having the, the, the format, it will respect the format that you are using. So in this case, as you can see, when I went to the body, I have the formats here, so it will be using this one, so it will be rendering as, is, as it is in the Drupal file. Yeah, you? Is there any special metrics you need to be aware of if you're using the layout mode? I will try to see. Uh, are you asking if there is some special... Uh, is there any downside to using this in layout mode? No, no, it works really well. The question is if there is any uh, consideration of things that we need to have in mind if we are using Layout Builder, and in general, it's not. You can, you can use uh, as a regular block, as I showed you before, or you can use to modify the, the rendering of an existing endnote or media entity or any other thing in Drupal. So now you can use it really well with Layout Builder. Okay. Uh, I noticed when you showed the HTML structure, the source of the page in the inspector, that there wasn't a shadow DOM encapsulating those components. And my question is, does the CSS in JavaScript, can it escape this component that you've created and okay. also be impacted by external CSS and JavaScript? Yeah, the question was, uh, when we are rendering the component, we were able to see when I inspect the code, that we have like this comment in the HTML, and that comment was telling me, you are using this component here. But also, as you could see, we were loading CSS uh, code and things like that. The question was, is the question was, is the CSS encapsulated for that component only, or is the CSS affecting the entire page, or is it is possible that I can affect another component with my CSS? The question is that those things are being done as regular Drupal libraries. So the question is that you can affect other components if you are not doing the right thing. For example, you can add a different class. So for example, yeah, you can go here to the editor. And for example, if I add a different selector here and I combine this CSS, I can affect another component. So 
that's the reason I recommend to use a real uh, modular framework or create your own CSS, but here you will be affecting that. And if I inspect the, the page, you will see the things in action. You will see that it is really loading the, the CSS as a regular library. So I will go here, I will try to inspect the, the page search. Source, and you will see, if I try to search for message, yeah, you will see the, the file is being loaded there. That's another good thing about Singletary good components. They are taking care behind the scenes to only load the CSS and libraries for the components you are rendering in that page. So they are not loading all the components all the time. So it improves the performance of the site. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sorry to try out STC uh, display, and it's great for entities and view modes like you showed yeah. One issue I ran into in this case right now is I have a link field that I wanted to be able to use different STC components for like what or something like that. So it's kind of uh, like a field for my component. Is there a way, a no code way of. Yeah, uh, the question was uh, I show you the SDC module in action, SDC display module, and it was able to render the entire node using a single target component. The question was. It is possible to render just one field as a single directory component? The, question, the answer is yes, and there are some improvements to that functionality. Currently, it is supporting that per field, and currently there is an integration with some things that we need to fix, and I was trying to contribute to that, but to do it with field groups. So you can create a field group and render the things inside that field group as a component. So I will I will try at least to show you that the options are there, so you will be able to play with them later. But yeah, it is it should be possible, and there are improvements on that thing to do, but it, it is possible. So I will go here to teaser, and you will see that if I go to this to the body, you can do this render as component. So it is possible to render just one field as a component, and if I create a field group, it is possible to render the field group as a component. Okay. To follow up, uh, when it's rendering the image later, when you've selected it, is it using the style that you've chosen here at the field, the field of the image? Okay, yeah, the question was, I was mapping the image to be rendered as the image property in the component. So how it is rendering the image? The question was, it is using the formatter that I'm using? Yeah, the answer is yes. It is using this formatter. So if I change this configuration, it will be reflected in the component rendering. Okay. Uh, are you making changes on this page? Uh, what I understand about the question is if, I, if it's possible to export that configuration or the, uh, the block that I create. Is that the right question? From this page to the component directory, because you have that being a component directory. So the changes here are those being reflected in that folder? Yeah, so the question was if it's possible to uh, change the configuration of the component. Or export the configuration of this component to the jumbo file or something like that. Yeah, no, in this case, I would say no. In this case, it is the opposite. Is there the definition that I did in the component jumbo file is the one that it is using to, to show these options. So if I don't define the, for example, as you can see, it is only providing me title, image, and link. And then if I go to the Jumbo file for this component, those are things that I have. So let me do this part. So I have title, image, and link. So I will need to create another option here to be able to see that option for, for the mapping. So yeah, this is the opposite. I need to modify the component Jumbo file, then I clear the cache, and then I go here to be able to map the information. Okay. Going back to the example with the image. Let's say I just want the image URL and not the actual image file rendered in all of its wrappers. How would I extract just the URL out of that image? Yeah, the question was, in this case, I'm using the entire rendered image. I'm using the, the default formatter 
to be able to render the image and it will add the image tag and all the things from for me. But there are cases where we just need to send the image URL to the component and then to another stuff. It is possible because you can do it in two ways. You can create your own formatter. In this case, you can use the formatters from Drupal and you will be able to send the stream. And, or you can create an extra field that will do the things that you want to do and you can send those things. So yeah, it is possible. Okay. Uh, sorry? Yeah, the question was, it is possible just to copy the component from another area. So I have like one or two things. Can I, can I use the same component for the small side? Yeah, the question is, is it easier or if I can just to copy and paste the component from another theme because I have multiple themes and I want to be able to move my, my component. The question, the, the answer, I would say is yes. But you just need to take care about the CSS, maybe, because all the other things will be easier just to, to use as they are. But maybe the CSS part, because I'm using a specific CSS framework for this, maybe if I move this component to another uh, project or another theme, and that theme is using, I don't know, Bootstrap, in that way I will need to modify the CSS, but the rest of things will work as expected. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the question is, they use more or do they use pre-process functions? Uh, the answer, as far as I know, is yes. They have, uh, you can use pre-processors -pre -pre because what it is doing behind the scenes, it is like, uh, for example, the SDC uh, display module, it is rendering the, the node entity. So you will be able to pre-process the node entity and then modify the information. Or the other way is that you can just try to do things manually as a, as a, as a regular developer. For example, I can show you with these uh, in the templates. I did the template for this one. This is a, a, another way that you can do. So for example, this is sending the, the branding block uh, it is sending, it is using the, this logo component. So in this case, you will be able to pre-process the branded blog and alter the information that you want to send to that, to that component. So yeah, it supports pre-process functions. Okay, another question. So, William reads the channel file. Do you mean altering the database to store that data automatically? Uh, do you mean, as far as I understood, the question is, are those YAML files creating tables or records in the database? The answer is no, because the, the, the configuration of this component is living here in code. So Drupal is just catching the, the information about the components. That's the reason I just cleared the cache because it is like catching all that information and it has all that information ready for me to use, but it is not like storing a specific table, this component, this component, it is not doing that. Where does it store that Ah, do you mean, ah, this is more, yeah, if you, yeah, you are related to the information in the database. This is more related to the SDC block module. In this case, because I was using the SDC block module, what that module is doing, it is storing the, thing, uh, the things as configuration, as a configuration block. So, block module Yeah, in this case, the SDC block module is automatically generating the configuration for the block type, and then I can export this specific uh, content, for example, this title and this thing, will be exported as a configuration file. So it will be, you can import that in another, in another, in another project. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, you're working in a theme here with these SDCs. Is that typical? Would you use this in a module? Would you have a component within a module as opposed to a theme, or is that not? I think that will be the future, because SDC components can be defined. Ah, sorry, the question was, is there is there regular workflow that we can use those components in modules? 
not only in themes, and the, the answer is yes, we can define components in modules and in themes. So what is expected is that Drupal core will be migrating, and for example, the Olivera theme will be migrating all the components to single territory components, Drupal core will be doing the same. So at some point, and now we can define components from modules, so it is possible. Similar, uh, what about with new recipes, new recipes? And do you mean the question is about if we can include components in recipes, maybe? Yeah, can you define them? Just like we did, he was talking about doing it in a module. Yeah, in this case, I would say that there should be a way for that because you can create your custom module and then make your custom module part of the recipe and that will be it. You will be able to install the module and you will be able to have the components ready to use for that recipe. So yeah, it should be possible to use them in recipes. Okay, thank you. Uh, the last. Sorry, uh, to know if they are related to your partner lab or if we can see the components in UI partner lab? Yeah, oh, there is a difference. No, in general, you, if you are coming from UI partner lab or things like that, you will find some similarities. You will find a lot of things that are quite similar. And I think part of the idea of single target components were from pattern labs and these kind of things in Drupal. So you will find a lot of similarities in the configuration. Maybe some of the terminology will be a bit different, but there, is, there are a lot of similarities in um, pattern lab. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. And